triggering cameras using sensors allows us to capture highly unique events. So in today's video, we're going to learn how to use a Raspberry Pi connected to two sensors in order to trigger a DSLR camera. As usual, we'll go over the steps for assembling the hardware and we'll be using Python to write the code to talk to the sensors and also trigger the camera. So after motion or proximity is detected, the camera will trigger and capture an image, which will be downloaded automatically to the Raspberry Pi. All right, let's do this. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're currently offering a wide variety of deals for the holiday season and the spring festival. Make sure to check out their coupons so that you can save while placing your PCB manufacturing and assembly orders with PCB Way. They were kind enough to send me a care package for the holiday season. As always, I was impressed with the high quality of their boards. One thing that sets PCB Way apart is that they're not a broker. Rather, they're a PCB manufacturing and assembly house. With friendly staff and great facilities, I highly recommend PCB Way for your PCB manufacturing and assembly needs. For this video I'll be using my Nikon D7000 DSLR camera, a Raspberry Pi 4, a USB Type-A to mini USB cable so that I can connect the camera to the Raspberry Pi, an ultrasonic sensor and a PIR sensor. I'll also use a block terminal hat for the Raspberry Pi and some male to female Dupont wires to make the connections a little bit easier. Optionally, we can add some hardware and a case to protect the Raspberry Pi. As usual, you can find all of these components in my little Amazon shop. I'll leave a link in the description of the video. Assembling the hardware is pretty straightforward. You're welcome to follow along or skip ahead in the video if you already know how to do this. I'll connect my DSLR camera to the Raspberry Pi using the mini USB cable. Then, as we learned in another video, I'll log in remotely to Raspbian running on my Raspberry Pi using the terminal and the command SSH on my MacBook computer. I'll then use the aptitude get install command to install the utility GPhoto 2. This will allow us to communicate with different cameras over USB. And if you want to know if it works with your own camera, double check on the list on their website. I'll then make sure that the PIP package manager for Python 3 is installed on my system. I can then use PIP3 to install the SH module. This module provides an interface to the GPhoto 2 library, although for today's project, we'll be using the library directly. If we type in the command gphoto2, we can see a list of all the options that we can use with this utility. If we try the auto detect option and we've configured our DSLR to operate in USB mode, we should see it on this list. If everything looks correct, we can try to capture an image. If we then use the list files option, we should be able to read the different images in the SD card of the camera. Notice that in my case, I can see a couple of storage folders, but no images. If I look at the default configuration, I'll be able to find out why. The reason is that the capture target is set to internal RAM rather than the SD card. We can correct this by setting that option to be choice one for memory card. We can then double check that the changes were set and try to capture a new image. If everything looks okay, we can try copying that image to our Raspberry Pi. For this, we'll use the get all files option. Once the file is copied over to the Raspberry Pi, I can SCP it back to my MacBook and visualize it. As a reminder, we went over the details of secure shell SSH and secure copy SCP in another video. 
Now that we're more familiar with the gphoto2 library, it's time to write some code. I'll create a directory called scripts and use the command line text editor nano to create and edit a Python script that I'll name capture.py. I'll add the shebang for Python 3 and I'll import the subprocess module. This will allow me to execute the same command that I was issuing before from within the Python script. One difference though is that instead of having different options for capturing and downloading the images, I'll use a single one. I'll also add an extra option for setting the file name. I'll add an extra parameter to the subprocess method so that we can see any output that this command returns. I'll grab any sub message with the communicate method and print it out onto the terminal screen. By pressing Ctrl O and selecting the original name of the file capture.py, I'll save it and I'll open a new tab so that I can run it with the Python command. Once I do, the camera should snap a photo and the image should be downloaded to the location I specified on the script. With the basic functionality in place, it's time to use some sensors. For making the code a little more readable in the video, I'll change my text editor to Vim. If you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to keep using Nano. I'll go ahead and define a function that I'll name take picture to enclose the code that we had before. The function will take a parameter that will set the file name of the image that's created. Then in the main section of the code, I'll use the time sub module to set the file name to the current time. That way it'll be unique. I can then go ahead and connect the PIR sensor. I'll use GPIO4 for data, 5 volts for power, and I'll connect the ground pins together. To determine if the motion sensor was activated, I'll use the GPIO0 module. I can create an instance of the motion sensor class and use the wait for motion method which blocks the execution of the rest of the code until the sensor detects a motion. So if I've hooked up everything correctly and don't have typos in my script, I should be able to run it, create some motion near the sensor, and have the picture file downloaded automatically to my Raspberry Pi. I can then copy it over to my MacBook and double check that what I got is what I expected. If everything is working correctly, it is time to try the ultrasonic sensor. I'll use GPIO4 for echo, GPIO5 for trigger, and I'll switch 5 volts to 3.3 for power. Make sure that your ultrasonic sensor board allows for this. Similar than before, I'll connect the two grounds together. For this sensor, I'll import the distance sensor class from the GPIO0 module. I'll comment out the motion sensor code to avoid conflict, and I'll create an instance of the class that I'll name ultrasonic. I can then use the distance property of the object to get the distance in millimeters, and I'll multiply by 100 to get it into centimeters. Then, let's say that if an object is closer than 10 centimeters, we'll take a picture. In this case, to wait for an object to be at that distance, I'll need to create an infinite loop. Once an object is detected and a picture is taken, I'll make sure to break out of it. I'll also add a 1 second delay between measurements, as recommended by the sensor manufacturer. So with those changes in place, we're ready to test out our ultrasonic sensor trigger. So there you have it. Using Python and the gphoto2 library, we've been able to use two different sensors to automatically trigger our DSLR camera. If you like my videos, I invite you to my Patreon page where you can chip in a buck or two. That really helps me put in more time into the videos and release them quicker. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. 
You can also interact with me on social media. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, and you can even use the community tab of the channel. Thank you for watching my videos and I will see you next time.